Hello, this will be an example of the pumping lemma for regular languages. Consider the language L having the input alphabet A and B and being the string A star B and A star B and A star such that N is greater than or equal to zero. Now the question that we're asked is, is this language L regular? We have a few different ways to determine if a, re if a language is regular. Um, one of them is to design or create a finite state automata or a finite state machine that recognizes L. And by the definition of a regular language, if there's a finite state machine that recognizes it, then it is regular. So we could do that for this case. I mean, I mean we really can't. I mean, we could attempt to, though. Um, but that could, be a, that could take a long time trying to figure this out. And so the next thing we could check is the bounds of L. Is L bounded? In this case, L is bounded. It has a lower bound of zero, but it doesn't have an upper bound, and that's really important in determining whether it's a regular language or not. And we'll come back to that. The next one is, does L need to remember anything or balance anything? And in this case, we do. Uh, we do have something that L needs to balance. It needs to balance the this first n, let me grab a color, it needs to balance this first b to the n with the second b to the n. Right? Those have to be the exact same length. Um, and our So finite state machines cannot do that because we do not have memory that can keep track of that n. Also keep in mind that because n is not bounded, does not have an upper bound, n could be infinity, it can go on forever, and we have nothing we have no type of memory for finite state machines that can keep track of that. So as a general rule, or a general tip, is to look at the n-powered groups in the language. Typically, if there are zero n-powered groups, then the language is regular. And if there are two n-powered groups, it's context-free, and if there's more than two, then usually it's non-context-free. Um, but we'll get into that later. So let's come back here. Is L a regular language? And I think that it's pretty clear that it's not a regular language. Um, maybe a context-free language, but it's not a regular language. It needs to balance this first group, this first n-powered group, with this second n-powered group. And so L is not a regular language. But when we say that, when we say that L is not a regular language, we also have to have a proof that proves that L is not a regular language. And that is where we have the pumping lemma become very useful. So now I'm going to walk through step by step exactly how to use the pumping lemma in proving that a language is not regular. So with any instance of the pumping lemma, the first step is always to assume that L is a regular language. And the next step is to let P be the pumping length. And then after that, we finally come to a, a step that we have more control over, um, right? It's not an arbitrary step. So C, choose a string, W, such that W is in the language L, and the length of W is greater than or equal to the pumping length. And um, you probably already know this, but this notation is called set builder notation, and it is convenient in this case. So W... So let's choose a string for our proof. Um, and in this step, we really can choose any string that we want. Um, so, so the problem that we have sometimes, though, is if our string is able to be pumped, then our proof, our pumping lemma proof, which is a proof by contradiction, is false, right? Well, then we haven't proved that, it's a, that it can't be pumped. So we need to choose a string that cannot be pumped. And, the, and pumped, in this case, means repeated. And as we go on, we'll see exactly what that means to have something pumped in the language. So we want to choose a string that we want to prove cannot be pumped. Um, and so keep in mind that s this step, C, let's use yellow, so C, we can come back to. If we get to our other steps and we find out that C, the language we chose, we find out that W is not a good string, we can come and change the string right here. So the string that I'm going to choose 
from our language L. And because we have three A's and each A has an, a clean star, um, we're going to omit the first A and the last A and keep only one A in the middle. And we can choose any amount of A's at the beginning, the middle, and the end because of that star. So keep that in mind. So first we take this B to the N, A to the A, and then B to the N, and now replace that N with P, with the pumping length. And this is going to be the string we're working with. B to the P, A, B to the P. Okay, and now we come to our pumping lemma, where we, where we invoke the pumping lemma. Um, by the pumping lemma, W, our string W, is divided into three parts, X, Y, Z, such that X, Y, Y, Z is still in the language L. And this is what it means to pump. We have Y, which is a division, a part of our, of our string. It's just one little part of our string, which is B, P, A, B, P. Right, so Y is going to be one part of that. And then we, we pump, which means repeat Y. And that is still going to be in our language L. That's what we are trying to prove. Disprove, sorry. That's what we're trying to disprove with this proof. Okay, and now that last step, D, leads us to this part of the proof, which is probably the most important part of the proof, because here is where we prove the proof. <laughs> so consider the divisions of W such that the length of X and W is less than or equal to the pumping length, and the length of Y is greater than zero, right? So we can't have empty strings here. We have to have something, but it cannot be greater than the pumping length. So if we look at W, which we have right here, our string, we have our B, first B, which is the length of P, right, with how we wrote it. B to the P means it's the length of P. Okay, so let's get to work and let's start with our first case. Our first case is when Y contains Bs, only Bs. Okay, so when y contains only b's, what does that mean? Um, to, to show this, to make it more visual, I'm going to pick an arbitrary b, uh, sorry, an arbitrary value for p, but just know that when you're actually proving this, you do not need any value for p. Um, but in this case, let's, let's consider when p equals 4. Okay, when p equals 4, w is going to equal b, 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 A, B, 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 B. Okay, so when P equals 4, W equals 4 Bs on one side, 4 Bs on the other side of the A. Okay, so now when we're dividing this into X, Y, Z, our case states that Y contains Bs, so we are going to make sure that our Y is either on the left side or the right side of A's. It cannot contain an A. So you'll quickly see that if you choose any amount of these b's, whether it be, you know, the first two as your y, this first two as your x, and this whole last section as your z, or let's say you choose this whole entire thing to be your y, and then x is epsilon nothing, and then z is still the same. Um, no matter how what you choose to be your y in this case, you're always going to end up with more b's on this side. Then on that side. For example, um, just to prove it, sorry, let me, for example, so let's choose this as our y, and let's choose this as our x, and let's choose this as our z. Okay, so the pumping lemma states that x, y, z is an L, true. Now x, y, y, z also needs to be an L. So if we pump y, then we get b, b, which is our x, and then we get b, 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 which is our y, y, and then we get our a, b, 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 which is our z. Okay, so our language needs to have a balanced amount of b's. The b's on the left side of the a need to match the b's on the right side of the a. Now that we've pumped Y, we do not have an equal amount. We have 6 on this side and we have 4 on the right side. Okay, um, so most of you probably wouldn't even need to choose an, uh, you know, a value for P. You should be able to intuitively see that this is the case. 
but sometimes it does help to pick an arbitrary value for p and then show show it that way to yourself and then for the proof you would write something along the lines of x y y z contains an unbalanced grouping of b's therefore the symbol means therefore x y y z is not in the language l okay so are there any other cases that we need to consider well we need to consider every case that holds true for these conditions that the length of x and y is less than or equal to p and the length of y is greater than zero but if we look at our string bp a bp if we choose a and bp as as our y then that breaks our first condition and if we choose just a as our y then that breaks our sec our first condition again and so really we're done with the proof we don't have to prove any any other cases we don't have to show any other cases of this and so the last part of our proof is the conclusion and the conclusion will be something like this no matter how we divide x y y z it cannot be pumped the assumption was false l is not a regular language so this whole thing let me zoom out so you can see it this whole thing you know a until f is the pumping lemma and it's really important that we show each step of this proof when we use the pumping lemma. In, in future videos, we'll be going over the pumping lemma more thoroughly, the formal definition of the pumping lemma, and also pumping lemma for context-free languages. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, or if you notice any errors in the video, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and good luck.